Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this example, like I said, particles can be huge. There are two box cars, and what in the world happened? Who is in charge of these? Why are there two rail cars just flying towards each other? I don't like this. <laughs> okay, but they've got masses of 20 megagrams. That's a million grams, 20 million grams, and 15 megagrams. And velocities as shown, three meters per second to the right for particle A, and one and a half meter per second to the left for particle B. And it says the speed of the car A after a collision of the cars collide are bound such that B moves to the right. That's what you're looking for. So car A, we don't know what its velocity is, but after they collide and rebound, so they're bouncing, um, car B is gonna be moving to the right. We also wanna find the average impulsive force between the cars if the collision place takes place in 0 0.5 seconds. So. Now you're wondering, like, wait a second, impulsive force. I thought we didn't have that for this because it's going to be internal. You are correct. Okay? So I'll give you a little hint here that first, to find that velocity of this car A, you're going to say conservation momentum. And second, after you do that, you're going to keep one of these stationary and say, okay, relative to this one being stationary, what would be the impulsive force that caused the other one to move with that relative velocity? You can choose either one way to do that. Okay, now if that didn't make sense, that's okay because we'll do it together. I want you to go ahead and try it on your own, okay? Try it on your own. So, three, two, one, and let's go. So first off, conservation of linear momentum. We have two particles at the beginning, both with momentum. Two particles at the end, both with momentum. Be very careful with the direction of your velocity here. And so we put it in there, and what we have right here, you're like, wait a second, I think it's a million, this is in kilograms. Um, you don't have to put it in kilograms, you could leave it in megagrams because in the end, the mega is gonna be divided off. And it's gonna be equal to my momentum at the end. I only know one of those though. Second one that I'm solving for. And so what I get in the end is that the velocity of A would be 0.375 meters per second. And what direction is it going? It's going to the right because its velocity is positive. Okay, now this one makes sense. And then here's where it probably threw you for a loop. So we look at this right here and we say, okay, I've got impulse and momentum acting on this car, um, but that's all internal, right? Well, yes, yes it is. What you say, is I had some initial momentum. I had some initial momentum, and then a force was applied to me. I'm completely ignoring that other car. A force was applied to me, and now I have a new momentum, okay? Initial momentum, and then a new momentum. And when you do that, you can say, okay, what force, what impulse would have been applied for me to have this new momentum? In this case, it would be 52,500 newton seconds. So you take your initial momentum and you subtract off your final momentum. Um, and you can see what the impulsive force would have had to been. Okay, so that's it for this time. Thank you for listening. And I'll see you all next time. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Bye-bye.